Watch almost any film involving deep space travel apart from the fantasy ones and you'll see people going into or coming out of stasis, which the waking up part usually looks quite unpleasant. But could this type of induced hibernation for longer space journeys become a reality in the not so distant future? The farther we travel into the solar system with our current transport technology, the longer it takes to get anywhere. From around about 5 months to get to Mars, up to 10 years to get to the outer planets, and that's without even thinking about travelling to the stars. The nearest Proxima Centauri would take around 70,000 years with our current tech. Even if we could travel at the speed of light, it's over a 4 year journey. This is fine for robotic space probes, but as it's been said before, as soon as you add humans into the mix, the issues go up by an order of magnitude. Having people awake and roaming around for years not only takes up much more in the way of resources to feed them and keeping them alive, but also there are the psychological issues of boredom, loneliness, or just getting on each other's nerves, trapped in a small spacecraft for as long or longer than someone gets for committing a serious crime. If we could put people into some form of hibernation, it would solve a lot of these issues. If they were asleep for most of the journey, then the space habitats themselves can also be smaller and lighter, so less propellant and rocket engines are required compared to a fully awake crew. This would also allow for more shielding against cosmic radiation, which is probably the biggest issue for long duration space flights. Even on a Mars mission, it could make a substantial difference to the craft configuration. It's hoped that it would also reduce some of the effects of weightlessness, such as the muscle and bone loss. However, we are not a naturally hibernating species, and we don't have the biological adaptations to either enter such a state or stay in it for any length of time without outside help. The nearest thing we have at the moment is therapeutic hypothermia which is well known and used in certain medical procedures and trauma treatments, but it is not the same as hibernation. Other methods of inducing torpor such as inhaling hydrogen sulphide has been used in mice to reduce the cellular demand for oxygen, and research into inhibiting a specialised group of neurons in the brains of rats to block the body's thermoregulatory cold defence, like shivering and increasing the heart rate when the body temperature drops, are also being conducted. We humans and other mammals have evolved to have a constant body temperature independent of the ambient conditions. This gives us an evolutionary advantage for increased mobility, but it also means that we have a high metabolic rate. We need a lot more food and produce more waste than animals in hibernation. Slowing this metabolic rate is the key goal, but without causing damage to the body in the process. There are two types of hibernation which animals use to help them survive conditions such as cold, harsh winters, very dry and hot periods, or when their seasonable food is unavailable. These two states are true hibernation and torpor. True hibernation is a voluntary state where the animal prepares by building up fat reserves and then going into a truly deep state of sleep whereby the body's temperature, heart rate, breathing and metabolic rate all dramatically slow down. A chipmunk, for example, can lower its heart rate from 350 BPM to just 4 BPM during hibernation, and many animals can lose up to half their body weight during this time. Torpor is like a very deep sleep state with the low body temperature, heart rate, breathing and metabolic rate of hibernation, but it can last from the equivalent of a normal night's sleep to months depending upon the species. Black bears enter this state between 3 and 5 months with regular wake up periods, and they can even recycle nitrogen waste from their bodies, preventing muscle atrophy. Animals in a state of torpor can also wake up, though it takes maybe an hour or more to do so and bring everything up to speed. Out of these two, torpor would be the most useful for us because of the ability to wake up in an emergency or on schedule. But we still don't know the cellular and molecular mechanisms of natural suspended animation. 
People have been kept in a controlled hypothermic state for up to 14 days, but there are problems with serious side effects such as blood clots, bleeding, infection and liver damage. There is also the need for us to have regular nutrients and fluids to keep our bodies working as we don't have the natural adaptation that hibernating animals have and this is one of the biggest problems we face. Both NASA and ESA are working on torpor inducing habitats whereby a person will be sedated and in cool placing them in a mildly hypothermic state. In order to provide the nutrients and fluids a process called total parenteral nutrition is used. This is feeding a person intravenously with all the essential nutrients and fluids to keep them alive with something like a peripherally inserted central catheter. This provides the nutrients directly into the bloodstream and is used in people of all ages when they are unable to be fed by mouth. The process bypasses the eating and digestive tract which is inactive with fluids being pumped in at a rate of around about 50 milliliters per hour. There would also have to be many precautions taking such as making the inside of the habitat as sterile as possible and using tunneled catheters and antibiotic infused activity catheters as any infection occurring during stasis could be very serious or even fatal and there will be very little way of any medical aid that could be done during the flight. But there are issues with this kind of hypothermic induced stasis. Although the body's metabolic rate drops by about 70% and uses less oxygen, the brain never actually goes to sleep, which is why in the film Passengers they wake up feeling extremely tired. New research is also finding that during sleep the brain flushes out toxins that build up during the day and which are thought to lead to the onset of Alzheimer's disease, which if this doesn't happen in stasis could be a problem for longer periods. Patients who currently undergo therapeutic hypothermia often take days to regain their strength and awareness, not the sort of thing that an astronaut needs when they have to be awake and alert in just a few hours. To help prevent muscle atrophy, muscles could be electrically stimulated with very low level electrical pulses to key muscle groups. Robot arms would be able to manipulate and manage the crew during the time they are in stasis. And because the living habitats are smaller than required for a waking crew, artificially induced gravity could be created by rotating the whole sleeping area. There is still a lot of work to be done in this field so it's highly unlikely that it would be used in any of the early Mars missions but once the issues have been ironed out it could become a standard way to travel to Mars and beyond. Journeys running into years though would require longer wake up periods or shift rotation where maybe one third of the crew are awake at any one time. By the time this becomes widely available we might even have developed quicker ways of getting around in space. So thanks for watching and don't forget to check out some of our other videos if you get the chance and don't forget to please subscribe, thumbs up and share.